the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated by independent research the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too, tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story. The body off Billingsgate. It was a grim scene there on the dock at Billingsgate, with the early morning fog swirling eerily around the three figures bending over the shapeless mass on the planking. The Scotland Yard inspector, the sergeant with his notebook, and Peterson, the nervous little fisherman, stammering answers to the inspector's methodical questions. Oh, Van Dodge say the man's been dead about 12 hours. You got that, sergeant? Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Peterson, you say you'd moored your boat out there on the river? That's right, Inspector. About two hours ago it was. Then as I was coming in, in the small boat here, I spotted the body in the water. I see. Nearly right ran into it, I did. Uh, Any idea who he is, Inspector? Looks like an American. Blow on the head, Sergeant. Blunt instrument. Put that down. Yes, sir. Now, let's have a look in his pockets. Blow on the head. How do you suppose a poor bloke come to this? Gangster affair, probably. Most of the gangsters seem to end up this way. Hello. What is it, Inspector? A check for 5,000 pounds on the Barclays Bank. Signed by uh, Wilfred Greenwood. Hmm. Stay here and look after things, will you, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Medical examiner will be up shortly. I'm going over to have a talk with the manager of that bank. Yes, sir. Blimey. What a way to die. Uh, how do you suppose... You he... heard what the inspector said, man. Blunt instrument. Yes, it was obvious that the man had died as the result of a blow from a blunt instrument. But there was something more important than that. Something the inspector was to find out later at Barclays Bank. Something which indicated that the most important cause of the man's death was a normally harmless instrument, just an ordinary fountain pen. It had been more than a month before in a fog like this one that Victor Milton groped cautiously toward the glowing yellow rectangle of an outdoor telephone booth in the murky darkness, listening. Yes, operator. I want to put through a trunk call to London, please. That's right. Hurry it along, will you? No hurry, John. Victor! Cancel the call. Hang up. What the deuce? Vic, I didn't know you were in Leeds. I thought you... Thought I was in London, I know. Who are you calling? Oh, uh, just a, a friend, Vic. Don't hand me that. You're the boy who's been tipping off the opposition, aren't you, Greenwood? You're wrong, Vic. I have nothing to do with it. Two that. weeks since you joined the organization. Two weeks since the other mob's been knocking off our trucks. Funny coincidence, isn't it? No, no, no. Wait a minute, Vic. I can explain. You can begin oh, oh. by telling me who you were calling in London. I told you, just a friend. Quit stalling. I got a train to catch. Who was it, John? You better talk or I'll... No, you won't. Drop it. Drop that gun. Tell me who you were calling. No, no. I won't tell you, Vic. I'll kill you. No. Give me Get it. your back. There. There. There, that's better. Vic... 
Don't do it. Don't! And that's how it began, Victor. With a young man named John Greenwood dead at your feet at a public telephone booth in Leeds. You bend down quickly, take his wallet and gun, and hurry off into the night. It's three blocks to the railroad station, and the train's due in five minutes. You stop for a moment on a bridge over a canal near the station, drop in the gun and wallet, and then hurry up onto the station platform. Tuppy! Tuppy, in here! This way, Tuppy! Okay! Got it! Oh. Ooh. Ooh, thanks. Thanks a million. Oh, you're not Tuppy. Uh, uh, Tuppy? Uh, I must sound awfully silly. It's a family nickname for my brother. I thought you were Tuppy, you see. He was never on time for a train in his life. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Oh, it's not that at all. It's uh, just... Well, uh, if you'd be good enough to sit down, I shouldn't wonder if I could start reading my paper. Oh, I'm uh, so sorry. I didn't realize we were in your uh, life. Sure. Sure, go ahead. We'll sit down over here. Uh, thank you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's the old boy? <laughs> Colonel Blimp? Shh. He'll hear you. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? You never know who you'll run into in a fog. Colonel Blimp? Or... Or what? An angel from the first cloud on the left. You Americans always come straight to the point, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> How did you know I was an American? <laughs> the way you talk. Oh, now, wait a minute. I've only been here for two weeks, but I've been working hard. I say bowler instead of derby, <laughs> petrol instead of gas. <laughs> You're as bad as Tuppy. He wants to sound like an American and can't pull it off either. I do wish he'd got here. You're not worried, are you? No, but he promised to ride to London with me to see Father. It's my first trip to town in almost a year, you see. I've been to school in Leeds and... Oh, oh dear, I, I must sound like an awful chatterbox. Oh, not at all. What's your brother doing in Leeds? He's just taken on a new job. Commercial traveler, paint, hardware, that sort of thing. He's young, of course, and a little irresponsible. But he'll settle down. No danger of puppies turning into a spiv. A uh, spiv? Yes, you see... A spiv is a, a, well, it is... It's a new word in our vocabulary, sir. An unfortunate addition, I might add. Oh, how do you mean, Colonel? Uh, Captain. Sorry. It's quite all right. A spiv, sir, does no work, pays no taxes, produces nothing of value, yet flourishes like the green bay tree. Black markets, hijacking, and so on. Shameful thing, shameful. <laughs> well, now you know what a spiv is. <laughs> it serves me right. <laughs> <laughs> When did we get to London? Around midnight. Oh, wonderful. I'll see you home. Oh, I, I couldn't. Really. Oh, not another word now. After all, I have to do something useful now and then. Oh, what do you think I am? A, a spiv? <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, Governor. King's Road. You really shouldn't have gone to all this trouble. My dear young lady, it's after midnight. The fog's as bad here as it was in Leeds. Uh, that'll be ten bob. Okay, here you are, driver. Careful in the fog now, it's a bad one. I cer I'm certainly grateful to you. It's the first time I've been here, you see. Father just moved in last week. Oh, I see. Well, think your father's still up? Well, I'll be insulted if he isn't. He knows I'm coming. Hillary! Father! Oh, oh, it's so good to have you home, my dear. And Tuppy. Oh, uh, I'm afraid I... Tuppy missed the train, Father. I thought I'd better see your daughter home, sir. It's a little late for her to be out alone. Well, uh, uh, thank you, young man. Uh, come in, come in, won't you? Oh, thank you. Now, uh, Hillary, don't you think you'd better... Oh, the telephone. Uh, make yourself at home, will you? Hillary, I'm sure the young man can do the spot of brandy. Oh, now, see here, it's pretty late. Perhaps I'd Nonsense. better be going. Nonsense. You heard what Father said. Oh, drunk call from Leeds. That must be Tuppy with some excuse or other. Don't be too harsh with him, Father. Do you prefer brandy oh. or whiskey, yes. mister? Yes. <laughs> Good heavens, you know, I don't even know your name. <laughs> We've come all this way and we haven't even been introduced. <laughs> I'm sorry. My name's Milton. Victor Milton. Well, how do you do, Mr. Milton? I'm Hillary. How do you yes. do? Yes, I'm listening, officer. What is it, Father? What's the matter? I see. Identification from the coat? Yes. Yes. Yes, I'll catch the first train north. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Father, what's happened? Is it... Tuppy? That was the police up in Leeds. He's not in another scrape. Not anymore. He's dead, Hillary. What? His body was found in the fog by a telephone booth been robbed. I, I can't believe it. 
I'm awfully sorry. I guess you two want to be alone. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you for seeing Hillary home, Mr... Milton. If there's anything I can do... Awfully kind of you, Mr. Milton. Our name is Greenwood. Greenwood? Uh, Wilfred Greenwood. My son was, was John. John Greenwood. He always called him Tuffy. Rob, but why would anyone rob him? He never had anything. He never... I, uh, I think it was something else, Hillary. And I'm going to find out who killed him if it's the last thing I do. With the prologue of The Body Off Billingsgate, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But now I'd like to ask one of the ladies here in the studio a question. Uh, did you serve iced tea for supper? Iced tea? Of course not. In this weather, we prefer a hot drink. Precisely. And just as you choose a different diet in cool weather... Remember, your car needs a different cold-weather diet, too, if you want to keep performance up and wear down. Just what do you mean by a cold-weather diet for a car? Well, first of all, the transmission and differential should be drained and refilled with the correct winter grade of signal gear lubricant. If your front wheel bearings and speedometer cable haven't been repacked for 5,000 miles, now is a good time to tend to that. And, of course, for a sweeter running motor, the old oil should be drained and replaced with the correct winter grade of Signal Premium Motor Oil. That amazing new type oil that actually keeps motors six times cleaner and reduces cylinder wear one-third. One more question. What is the correct winter grade of oil? That differs according to the make of car, its age, and the climate. But your Signal dealer can tell you exactly because he has an official factory chart which shows just what lubricant the manufacturer recommends for each part on your particular car. This is just another extra in Signal Dealer's complete line of services and products to help your car run better, look better, and last longer. And now, back to the whistler. It's a terrible shock, isn't it, Victor? The knowledge that the man you killed in Leeds was the brother of the girl you met riding up to London. John Greenwood, Hillary's brother. And it's hard for you to believe that her brother could be like that. That he could be the son of an obviously influential and respectable citizen like Wilfred Greenwood. But that's the way it is, Victor. A thing that might happen once in a million times has happened to you. It unnerves you, doesn't it? but not enough to destroy your role as innocent stranger. They haven't the slightest reason to suspect, Victor, and you decide that their friendship might be valuable. You send flowers and condolences to John Greenwood's funeral, then wait a few days before telephoning Hillary. Oh, hello, Mr. Milton. Thank you so much for the flowers. Oh, I'm sorry I couldn't do more to help. But I realize that at such a time... You've been most thoughtful. Father appreciates it. I, uh, I read about some flowers, uh, this morning in the Times. Oh? Yes, the carnations are blooming in Hyde Park. Say, I'll bet you haven't been out in the fresh air for a week. Well, as a matter of fact... You haven't. That's right. Only... You know, I think a stroll through the park or perhaps some boating would be just the thing for you. Well, I... I think so, too, Mr. Milton. I'd like very much to go. It is restful out here, Mr. Milton. I do feel relaxed now. That was the general idea. <laughs> but it's your expense. Aren't you tired of rowing? Oh, not at all. And I can use the exercise. I don't believe it. Though if you're anything like father... You... Too involved in business? You're all the same. Oh, no. No, I don't overdo it. Father does. Lately, anyway. To tell the truth, Mr. Milton, I'm worried about him. Oh? He's taken Tuppy's... John's death so hard. 
I really didn't expect him to be this way. John always got into scrapes, and Father's been so very proper. There were times when they had real differences. Father's so hurt by it that... Haven't... Haven't the police any idea who shot your brother? No. But Father won't give up. I wish I could help some way. You've done a lot already, Mr. Milton. Make it Victor, will you? All right, then. Victor. <laughs> That's better. Much better. Yes, Victor, it's going well. And as you continue to see Hillary during the days that follow, you begin to feel more secure. Knowing the friendship of influential people like the Greenwoods makes everything solid. The suite at the Carlton, the office in Oxford Street, your pose as the enterprising young American businessman. Yes, Hillary will solve some problems, but not all of them. What's wrong, Ernie? What's holding us up? Money. They got two of our trucks again last night on the Great North Road. Suit in materials, tweeds, worsteds, close to 4,000 pounds. Oh, I'd like to know who's tipping them off. Oh, could be anyone. They've got a man on every corner. There's no getting away from them. We need money, huh? Yeah. Quick. All right, Ernie. All right, I'll get it. Who do you know over here? Well, you just... I said I'd get it. Never mind how. All I need is a little time. <laughs> You like it here, Hillary? It's heaven. Well, that's because you're here in my arms. It, it's sweet of you to say that. What are we waiting for, Hillary? I, I don't know, Vic. It's the first cloud on the left, and we're sitting right on it, together. I never want to let you get away. Would you... Would you think it's strange if I proposed right here on the dance floor? Well, Vic, you shouldn't. What will father... He won't object. And what if he does? I... I don't know. Oh, we've wasted too much time already, Hillary. Let, let's do it. Let's elope. When? Right now. Oh, darling, we can't. Oh, yes, we can. I've already got the special license. Well, oh, I... Oh, Hillary, Hillary, please, please. We can talk about it on the way. On the way? Yes, darling. After all, you can't expect me to be married without my hat and coat. <laughs> Well, well, go ahead, Mrs. Milton. Ring the bell. I, I feel so nervous now that we're back, Vic. I, I don't know how to face Father. <laughs> Why so jittery? He's all prepared. You wired him, dear. I know, but... <laughs> here, here. I'll ring. Come on, chin up, darling. I don't know why I'm acting like this. Hello, Father. Well, Hillary, you did get back. And you, Victor, married to my daughter. That's right, sir. Well... What are we standing here for? Come in, you two. I've had the champagne on ice ever since I got your wire. Father, you darling. <laughs> I must say, Victor, you Americans don't let any grass grow under your feet. Well, so with a curl like Hillary. Oh, it's all right, my boy. I'm pleased. You must know that by now. Uh, the quality of the champagne certainly says something, Mr. Greenwood. <laughs> Good. Ah, but it doesn't say nearly enough. Now, come over here, both of you, to my desk. Now, uh, now where's my checkbook? Oh, now, Father, we really didn't expect Oh, never to... mind now, dear. I haven't any family heirlooms to pass along, but my bank account can certainly stand a substantial present to both of you. You're only embarrassed, Vic. Oh, where are my glasses, Hillary? Mr. Greenwood. Hillary's right. We, oh, uh... here, here, here. I can't see without them. Vic, you make out the check. But, sir, oh, I... go on, go on now. You may as well do it, darling. He always gets his way. Well, all right. Uh, uh, what's the date? Darling, our wedding day. How can you forget? It's October 11th. Oh, sure. Oh, I'm all mixed up today, darling. October 11th, 1947. Oh, now, let me see. Um, October... It's the tenth month, isn't it? That's right. Uh-huh. Ten, eleven, forty-seven. Uh, who shall I make it out to, Mr. Greenwood? Call me Dad, won't you? And uh, make it terrible to yourself, of course. 
You'll be the man of the house, I hope. Found my glasses yet, Hillary? I don't see them anywhere. Say, to the order of Victor Milton, 5,000 pounds. Five thousand pounds. You sound like you don't believe me, Ernie. I'll feel better when I see it. Skip it. You better keep your eyes on the road. If they hijack us again tonight, we're through. How much farther to Leeds? Ten miles. The boys are meeting us at the warehouse and... The... <clears throat> Crikey! What's the matter? Look up ahead. It's a roadblock. Gun it up. I can't. Give her the gas, I said. The load's too heavy. We'll tip over. Who is it? Do you know them? It's them again. The same ones. I know that lorry of theirs. Let the truck go then. Let it go. Jump and run for it. No, Vic, we ain't got a chance, Vic! What's the idea? Where are we? Keep moving, mate. Uh, what did you do to Ernie? Keep moving. Nice bunch of guys. Pulling me off my own truck. Slapping a blindfold on me. Driving me for miles. Maybe you'll wish it was further. All right. Hold it here, mate. Come in. Where did you find him? He jumped off the truck when we held it up. All right, mate. You can take off that blindfold. Here, I'll do it. <sighs> Fine thing. Shoving a guy around like... What the... Vic! Mr. Greenwood. For a moment, you can't believe it, can you, Victor? That you're standing face to face with your new father-in-law, Wilfred Greenwood. It, it can't be. that. There, there must be some mistake. There's He's up now. Mistake? He was on the truck. He said it was his. I see. All right. Go back to the truck. But, uh, uh, I'll take care of him. Give us an hour. Alone. Right Oh. So, Pop, you're in this racket too, huh? You're the guy that's been hijacking my trucks. It was you, Vic. You killed John. I don't know what you're talking about. I've had men working on my son's murder ever since he was killed, and I told them to bring me the man who did it, no matter who he was. They brought you, Victor, and they don't make mistakes. <laughs> Simple as that, huh? Of course, Mr. Greenwood, now that I'm your son-in-law... Hillary is better off rid of you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, you can't shoot me without... You didn't wait for it when it was John. No, Vic, I... You're doing nothing. Oh, let, let go! Oh, give me that gun. Give it to me. Yeah, that's uh, better, Mr. Uh, Greenwood. W what are you going to do? I haven't much choice. Oh, you won't get away with it, Vic. My men will be back here in an hour. I can get lost in England in less than an hour. You'll never stop running. I'll be alive, Greenwood, and with enough money to run a long ways, thanks to you. What? Your check for 5,000 pounds. Vic... You did kill him, my son, didn't you? Yes, yeah, I killed him. Thought you were smart planting him in my gang as a stool pigeon. Yes, I killed him. And I'll even show you how. No. No! Vic! Uh, yes, sir? Uh, good morning, good morning. I'd like to cash this check, please. Oh, very well, sir. Oh, Mr. Greenwood's check. Pay to the order of Victor Milton, 5,000 pounds. Yes, I'm uh, his son-in-law. Of course. All right, Mr. Milton, if you'll wait just a moment, I'm sure we can honor it for you. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, since tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day, I want to say for Signal Oil Company and the almost 2,000 signal dealers who serve the seven Pacific Coast states from Canada to Mexico, we hope that your Thanksgiving cornucopia will be filled to overflowing, not only with good food, but also with good health and good cheer. Certainly all of us can be thankful from the bottom of our hearts that we are living in America, the land of abundance and freedom for all. We of the Signal Oil family like to feel that in our 17 years of serving the West, 
we have played a part in furthering the way of life that is America. Because signal dealers own their own business, they are carrying on the tradition of the independent businessman who has played such an important role in building America. And Signal Oil Company, by supplying signal service stations with constantly finer products, has helped each signal dealer keep abreast of that ever-present healthy competition, which is the key to America's continuing progress. Competition which helps all of us here in America enjoy the highest in the world standard of living. And now back to the whistler. Yes, the man discovered by the fisherman at Billingsgate died from a blow by a blunt instrument, according to the records at Scotland Yard. But in a strange way, the real cause of his death was the stroke of a fountain pen on a scrap of paper. If another man had held the pen, the victim might never have died. But the fatal pen marks could never be erased or changed. They were still there on that check for 5,000 pounds found in the dead man's pocket. Signed by Wilfred Greenwood. Even 12 hours in the cold water of the Thames River hadn't blurred a line. The Scotland Yard inspector waited quietly as the cashier at Barclays Bank examined the check carefully. I say the check is wet, Inspector. It's. Yes, the man is made out to. This Victor Milton was found dead at Billingsgate Dock a few hours ago. Oh, I see. A suicide, Inspector? Hardly. Gangster affair, I'd say. Revenge for something the bloke had done. You've uh, seen that check before? Oh, yes. Only yesterday, Mr. Milton was in trying to cash it, Inspector. We had to refuse him, of course. Oh, why is that? I felt quite badly. He acted so strangely, almost desperate. I dare say he was. It seems he'd written the check himself for Mr. Greenwood to sign, but he post-dated it. I explained that the check couldn't clear for another month. He post-dated it? Yes, it was dated 10-11-47. You see, he was obviously an American, and they write a date differently than we do. They put the month first and the day next. While here in England, of course, we put the day first and the month second. Then this check he wrote? Is just reversed. He meant to indicate October the 11th, but actually in writing 10-11, he made it November 10th. So odd. Just a difference in custom. That's right. But I had to tell him we couldn't honor the check until a month from now. Strange fellow, you know. He seemed so anxious to have the money. But when I suggested he have Mr. Greenwood write him another check, he didn't say a word, just looked at me and walked out. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time, brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Wally Mayer and Alma Lawton. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Leslie Edgley, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>